Wyoming's four distinct seasons. A natural clock set by Earth's rotation and the tilt of its axis. It's driven the cycles of all life since before the dawn of humanity. The vernal equinox, when the length of day exceeds the night, marks the onset of spring. In the 1970s, biologist Frank Craighead began making observations on the seasonal timing of ecological events and published the popular book, For Everything There Is a Season, and the Craighead's research was a family affair. Dad used to take us out all the time. So I look at it now, and look at these photos, and there's a 10-year-old kid. You know, these are real living, live grizzly bears, and I'm sitting there with it, claws this big, and here's a 10-year-old kid holding it. The bear's alive, it's breathing, and it's looking at me. You know, it was just, I can't believe they did it. Forty years later, Trevor Bloom is retracing the footsteps of Frank Craighead. Do you think he was aware of climate change at that point? He knew it was coming. I don't think he knew that it, it was already here, but it's definitely here. And the results are startling. Pretty crazy to think about that in just 45 years, the onset of spring is two to three weeks earlier now than observed by your father. I mean, that's not that long. And it happened fast. The glaciers are, are disappearing, and, you know, the different layers, the ice and the hoarfrost and the, the snow pack itself. He wasn't just looking at temperatures. He was out in the field looking at when the flowers bloomed and when the ground squirrels came up. The red-tailed hawks would come back. Snow had already gone. The ground squirrels were harder to find. You know, the bears, you see them digging up ground squirrels. I think it all kind of starts with snow, right? We're getting snow coming later, so they're going into hibernation later, and then they're coming out earlier. The foxes and coyotes can't get to the mice. We had one summer not too long ago when there were no insects. There was nothing to eat. I just didn't see the swallows. I didn't see the bluebirds. You know, there are just so many cascading effects of the temperature changes. The rivers and the water. Temperatures this age-old clock is off. Yellowstone has always been thought of as a refuge for wildlife. So if it's happening here, what does that mean for the rest of the world? One reason we should all be concerned is that Wyoming is a headwater state. Two-thirds of the country rely on melted snow from the greater Yellowstone. From farmers in California to Nebraska to Idaho, all depend on this water. Spring is coming to a close, and the solstice marks the beginning of a new phase. Summer. The clock is ticking. <laughs> 